The Search Engines tab of the SEO checklist is primarily concerned with installing the XML sitemap module to create an XML sitemap on your website, and also getting accounts with Google and Microsoft so that you can use some of their tools that help you manage and analyze the traffic to your site, and also submitting your sitemap to those two services. So we're going to start by installing and enabling the XML sitemap module. You can find this at drupal.org slash project slash XML sitemap. And do note that as of the time of this recording, XML sitemap is currently in alpha for Drupal 8. So that means two things. First of all, don't install this on a live site without testing it on your development site first, just to make sure it doesn't cause any huge problems. Second of all, it is a little bit finicky right now. We're going to encounter a few minor little speed bumps as we use this, but nothing major, nothing that we can't easily overcome. So just be aware of that if it's still in alpha when you're trying to use this module. So once you've downloaded XML sitemap, you're going to go to extend as usual, and it's got its own tab here on the modules list, XML sitemap. Now, we're going to enable XML sitemap and XML sitemap custom, but we need to do these one at a time. That's one of those little finicky things that I was talking about. So first click XML sitemap and install. And if you see this page, don't freak out. This is kind of just what happens right now with the current state of XML sitemap. It's gonna say we got an error, no big deal. In most cases, this has actually installed. So you can back up. And if you don't see it listed here, that's a good sign. That means typically that it was in actually installed successfully. Then we're going to enable XML sitemap custom, which basically provides us with configuration options. Now, do note, we also have XML sitemap engines, which submits the sitemap to search engines for us. That can be really helpful. We're not gonna use it in this tutorial. We're gonna kind of walk through the manual way of submitting this to Google and Bing, but know that this is available and in many cases can be really helpful but we're just going to enable XML sitemap custom now and click install and no error there. So that's good. Now we should be able to press alt D type in sitemap and go to XML sitemap or go to configuration, search and metadata, XML sitemap. You may see that there were some problems detected. Usually that just means that we haven't actually indexed our site yet. We haven't run cron or rebuilt our sitemap or anything like that. So this is to be expected when you first come to this page. First, let's just add an XML sitemap. We'll give this the label sitemap and click save. That pretty much just gives us something to work with. We're not gonna worry about custom links. This page just allows you to manually add your own links to include in the sitemap, but everything that we want included, we're gonna have included automatically. Let's skip settings for a second and go over to sitemap entities. And this is where we're going to choose the things that we want included in our sitemap. So basically, in your sitemap, you want included everything that you want search engines to easily be able to find. You're basically advertising to search engines, hey, make sure that you know that all these pages are on my website. So we might not care about comments in that case, or some specific things like files or custom blocks. I'm just going to go with content and taxonomy terms. There are a lot of cases where you might want to include users as well or any of these other things, but we're going to keep it basic and go with content and taxonomy terms. Make sure you actually select all of these and click save. And then after you do that, you need to stay on this page and we need to configure each of these. So click configure next to article because by default, they're excluded even though we've selected them here. So we need to click included. You can leave these as their defaults and click save configuration. Then go back to settings and sitemap entities. Click configure next to basic page and include that. Save configuration. And then you may be able to just back up two times like I was. And for tags, click configure, included, and save configuration. Now we're gonna go back to settings. And first we're gonna give this a minimum sitemap lifetime. This basically keeps the site from refreshing 
the sitemap too constantly. Now, usually this is not an issue because it's only going to refresh the sitemap when Quran runs anyway. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But just to be safe, I usually like to just make sure there's some sort of minimum on mine to make sure that something doesn't go wrong and the site isn't kind of working nonstop. It's recommended to choose one day. That's often perfectly fine. If you have a site with lots of content frequently updated, then you can go lower than that. I'm going to do five minutes basically just for this tutorial in case there's something that I need to refresh again later, but you should be fine with essentially whatever you pick here for this tutorial. Now you need to open up advanced settings here and we're not going to do much here, but we do need to provide a default base URL. That's going to essentially be the domain of your site. For me on my development server, it's this big long bit of text. So you're going to paste that there. Make sure you include the HTTP colon backslash backslash. Yours will probably look much different from mine. And then click save configuration. So now we have all of the settings for our sitemap and now we need to build it for the first time. We do this by going to rebuild. And usually you don't need to play around with anything here. And essentially what we're doing is manually rebuilding the site or the sitemap rather. Now, if you ever make any large scale changes to the content on your site, then it can help to go to rebuild and, and manually rebuild it again on your own. But really all you need to do in most cases is rebuild it for the first time when you first set this up and then cron takes care of that from then on. So we're going to click save configuration. And right now it's building our sitemap for us. And once that's done, we should have a sitemap on our website. We'll find this at our domain slash sitemap.xml. You can type that in manually and you should get a page that looks something like this. If you only have maybe like your homepage here or it doesn't quite look right, make sure that you configured all of the different content types and all of the different entities to be included like we did earlier. Because again, by default, it doesn't actually include those even though you essentially tell it that you do want them on the sitemap. So what this sitemap does, if you're not familiar with it, as I said earlier, is it provides search engines with a list explicitly telling them about all of the pages on your website. Search engines will often look for this because sometimes there's pages that they might not have found otherwise. So here you're just making it as easy as possible for search engines to find out about pages on your site. And ultimately, that's what search engine optimization is about. It's about letting search engines know what pages on your site exist, what they're about, things like that. The first step, of course, is them knowing that the page exists. And this is a great way to let them know that these pages exist. If you're having trouble getting your site to build your sitemap, one thing to try is after you do everything we've done, go to configuration, system, and cron, and just click run cron. We're going to manually run that. And sometimes that can help, but usually you won't have that problem. And now from now on, whenever cron runs, it's going to take a look at all of the new content on your site. And if the minimum time for your sitemap has run out and there's new content, then one of the things that will happen during this cron run is that your website will add those new pieces of content to your sitemap. So if we go back to configuration now, search and metadata, SEO checklist, then search engines, we'll see that it's automatically checked install and enable XML sitemap for us. We'll manually tell it that we have configured it and that we have set up cron. Again, setting up cron, even if you, you didn't have any problems with getting your sitemap built the first time, this essentially just tells your website how often you want cron to run, how often you want it to run through and see if there's anything that the site needs to do that's supposed to be automated. Typically, in almost every case, cron is automatically set up for you. But one thing to check for, I'll go ahead and save this and I'll show you one quick thing to check for. So you should have these top three things checked now. To make sure that cron actually has been set up, again, you go to configuration, system and cron. 
make sure you have some sort of time value here and that it doesn't say never. Otherwise, it's never going to rebuild your sitemap for you and it's never going to do a lot of the things that your website needs to do. So again, now that we have a sitemap on our site, first off, using the XML sitemap module, it's going to be recreated for us automatically on a regular basis, which is incredibly helpful. And now that we have that, search engines are easily going to be able to know about all of the different pages on our site, specifically the ones that we want them to know about.